Hello, hello guys, it's JT Tapius, and today I wanna to talk to you guys about a subject that I am extremely passionate about, and it is the subject of temperament theory. Now, you can go back and research temperament theory all the way back to the time of Socrates, uh, so it's been around for quite a bit. Uh, Tim LaHaye is a pastor that popularized uh, uh, temperament theory there for a little while with the four temperaments, and then my good friend, mentor, and amazing uh, pastor, Dr. Richard Arnold, um, brought the five temperaments. And Dr. Arnold is the founder of the NCCA, the National Christian Counseling Association, which some of you guys would know that I went back to school about two years ago and um, um, one class away from getting my master's degree in substance abuse and eating disorders through the NCCA. It's been an amazing, amazing experience. and. Wow, the temperament theory tool that Dr. Arno uh, brought to the table is just incredible. It blew me away, and it was one of the things that motivated me to go back to school. So I'm going to give you a little explanation of why I thought that that was so incredible. Uh, for those of you that know me well, I had been immersed in the world of personal development and psychology for many years as a master practitioner in neurolinguistic pre uh, programming, NLP. And that was all amazing. There were some great tools there. And for those of you that don't know what that is, that's a form of applied psychology. And it's basically everything that Anthony Robbins, the uh, personal development guru, um, does behind the scenes. So the magic that you see him create basically comes through the tool of neuro-linguistic programming. And I thought that that was great. Um, loved it, studied it, absorbed it, applied it, lived it, did all those things with it. And it was an incredible experience. But um, I noticed that it was the tool that um, could only take me so far. It was behavior modification versus soul transformation. And so to give you an idea, you can give people a set of new ideas, reframes, all the things that will get them to change how they behave. Uh, but that's a disciplined effort. And so soul transformation talks about a conviction, something that actually comes from the heart that moves you where you don't need to discipline yourself anymore. You're simply acting congruently based on what is in your heart. And when that happens, you're golden because you no longer have to discipline yourself to do anything. Things just happen naturally, they happen on a daily basis, and they're sustainable. Um, you don't have to go back to an event to get hyped about something. You don't have to read a book to get hyped about something. Um, you know, soul transformation really talks about your heart coming alive. And the Bible tells us that when we become um, believers in Jesus Christ, we are, our heart of stone is replaced for a heart of flesh. And then we come alive. We come alive to the world. We come alive to our feelings. And, and it, we, we just become extremely resourceful as the Holy Spirit carries us through, gives us wisdom and teaches us how to live a life that truly, truly uh, has uh, sustenance. And so that's kind of been my process for the past six years as a Christian. And two years ago, I went back to study temperament theory and it was amazing. And so I'll give you a little bit of background on temperament theory. Um, your temperament is actually God given and we get that from Psalms 139, 13, where it says, for you, for you were created in my own, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. And that is Psalm 139, 13. And I believe that is King David um, expressing how God created us in our mother's womb. And so therefore he knew your name before you were born. He knew you um, before you were even an idea in your mother or father's mind. You were already created. This talks about intentionality and a purpose for your life way before you were born. Uh, your character is basically uh, formed by your environment, your culture, your peers. Uh, you become basically a product of your environment, right? And so that makes sense. And we see a lot of that in, 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 uh, in people that they are transformed by their environments. Then you have your personality. Your personality, personality is basically the mask you wear in every single environment in order to thrive. So in other words, you are one way at home, you're one way at work, you're one way with your friends, you're one way with your spouse, but that's not necessarily you. It's just the mask you wear because you've realized through the interactions that whatever mask you wear is going to benefit you or not. And so you wear this mask. The challenging thing about the mask is that we really get accustomed to 
to um, to that mask and we sometimes forget who God created us to be or maybe we don't even know who God created us to be but we've wore a mask for so so long that we truly don't know who we are and I believe that 99% of the population kind of resides there in an area where they don't know who they truly are they've just wore a mask for so so long and that mask is serve the purpose um, and it, it maybe will get them to a certain area in their life of success but that's as far as they're going to go because until they truly get to know why they're here why God created them and what what their true purpose is then most of the time people feel lost they feel depressed and they don't feel like they're on purpose if you ask anyone today how do you you know are, are, are you happy most of them go hmm maybe or some people say yeah I'm happy but not necessarily uh, give me one second come in I'll be right with you and so I'm here at the gym someone just came in um, and so if you ask people about you know are they happy with where they are most people will tell you that they're still trying to figure it out they don't necessarily know who they are and so what the amazing thing about this tool is that it allows us to truly understand who God created us to be now there are three areas that um, the, the APS, the Arnold Profiling System, talks to us about. You have the area of inclusion, and those are just your uh, socializing abilities, your intellectual abilities. Uh, then we have the area of affection, and that's how you express love and how you like others to express their love towards you. And then we have the area of control, which is a, such an important area because I call this the rudder, right? This is truly where... Um, the rubber meets the road in other words this is truly what controls your life and it, and and so in that area we see um, how you express control and how much control you allow over your life and then we have five temperaments which is very unique to the Arnold profiling system or what dr. Richard Arnold created because all the other temperament theories we talked about four temperaments dr. Arnold talks about five temperaments we have the choleric we have the melancholy we have the sanguine we have the phlegmatic and we have the supine and all five of, the, of those temperaments can interact in three areas you know you like like we just talked the area of inclusion affection or control and then we have areas that are expressed areas and we have areas that are wanted areas those express is what you show and then wanted is what you truly want and this is sometimes where we create internal conflicts where you're expressing one thing but you really want something else and boy oh boy does that create some serious challenges for people when they're expressing one way but they're truly wanting something else an example of that is um, you know in your relationship you may uh, not show that you're very affectionate but truly deep down you want that affection and if you're not getting that affection eventually that's gonna cause conflict in your relationship and so that's just one area but just imagine all the different areas of your life how they can be in conflict and how that can create some friction in your life and some tension in your life and so um, this is basically an overview of temperament theory tomorrow I'm gonna to be talking to you about the temp the supine temperament and how that interacts with not just your life in general but I'm gonna put it into the context of fitness which is how you guys already know um, what I love to talk about and so I'm going to put that in the context of fitness and I believe it's going to be an amazing time so stay tuned remember tomorrow we're talking about the sanguine temperament love you guys God bless you and I look forward to seeing you soon bye